The conditional cash transfer program of the Aquino administration has been the centerpiece program of poverty reduction. It has been focused on education and health. Five years after its full implementation, how is it doing right now? Joining us tonight on News Life is Assistant Secretary Javier Jimenez, a spokesperson of the DSWD. Good evening, sir, and welcome to News Life. Good evening, Kathy. So, for the past five years, how is the conditional cash transfer program doing? How many families did you begin with, and how many families are part of the program now? So, in 2010, there were uh, 700,000 families, and in 2015, we've expanded that to uh, 4.4 uh, million families. Mm -hmm. uh, our budget over the past five years, uh, we've spent around uh, 180 uh, billion. On, uh, this year, we have 62 billion set aside for the Pantuit Familia. Mm -hmm. uh, with one year remaining for the term of President Aquino, do you have a specific target before he relinquishes his uh, position? Well, uh, the, the budget for next year will be the same amount okay. because we have reached the uh, the peak of our uh, coverage. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to continue it uh, until and hopefully into the next administration uh, so that the 10 million uh, children who are currently enrolled either in elementary or high school mm -hmm. will finish high school. Okay. Sir, can you walk us through briefly on the process, um, how a family is enrolled to become part of the program mm -hmm. and what benefits do they get and what are the safeguards make sure that they comply with the requirements? So first of all, we have a uh, national household targeting system mm -hmm. for poverty reduction or Listahanan. Mm -hmm. It's a database of 5.2 million poor F Filipinos that they, the survey was done in 2008. Mm -hmm. From that 5.2 million, we look for uh, families who have uh, children aged 0 to 14 mm -hmm. uh, and they become the uh, potential eligible beneficiaries of Panto with Familia. Mm -hmm. So those lists of names for each barangay, So, but again, we've expanded it over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a community assembly where the names are listed, mm -hmm. and uh, those who agree to become part of the Panto with Familia, uh, they sign a compliance form, mm -hmm. and then from there, uh, they can enroll up to three children. Okay. Uh, for the elementary uh, grants, it's 300 pesos per child per mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. And for the high school grant, it's 500 pesos per child okay. uh, per month. And then there is also a health grant worth uh, 500 pesos also. The requirement is that for them to get the education grant, uh, they have to have at least 85% attendance either in elementary or high school. Mm -hmm. So if they don't, if the child doesn't reach 85% attendance, they don't get the cash grant mm -hmm. for that particular child. Uh, for the health grant, the mothers have to centers on a monthly basis and have their children checked up, um, weight monitoring, and uh, the vitamins, the deworming, uh -huh. and all of that. And of course, uh, the specific unique feature of Pantoid Familia in the Philippines is that there is a family development session that mm -hmm. they also have to attend uh, every month. Mm -hmm. So a family may be able to get uh, at least 1,400 or, or up to 2,000 a month mm -hmm. depending on how many children are enrolled in Pantawid Familia. Mm -hmm. Sir, in terms of poverty alleviation, what indicators have you seen throughout the years that really tell you that the CCT program is working? Well, uh, in terms of poverty alleviation, mm -hmm. the impact really of the program happen in the next generation okay. because we're targeting the, the these generations, the children and the kids. Uh, we know that their parents are poor precisely because uh, they have uh, low education and therefore they cannot get good jobs mm -hmm. and uh, most likely they will also end up with the same faith. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we provide them with uh, education and health to ensure that uh, once they finish high school they will be able to get uh, better jobs, mm -hmm. be employed, and be able to participate in the uh, high economic growth of the mm -hmm. Philippines. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, uh, the cash grants, uh, the, we're keeping them, we're keeping the children in school, and we're keeping them healthy, mm -hmm. and then the cash they receive, mm -hmm. that can also help the family in their daily expenditures. Mm -hmm. Sir, what challenges have you encountered in the past five years and how are you dealing with those? Well, the constant challenges we face because mm -hmm. uh, now that the program has been expanding, mm -hmm. we do get a lot of uh, inquiries from other families mm -hmm. who feel that they are poor and that they should mm -hmm. be part of Pantoid Familia. Okay. Unfortunately, because they're not, they weren't part of the database, okay. because sometimes when the database was, the survey was done in 2008, 
there were really a lot of families who did not want to participate. Okay. They didn't know what the survey was for. Uh, they ran away when our sir, uh, when our enumerators came to their communities. Mm -hmm. So he's on the as a database, okay. and that's the first requirement. Okay. You have to be in the database of the list tahanan for you to become a uh, potential eligible beneficiary of Pantoid Pamilya. But sir, how about the times, you know, we have so many calamities reaching mm -hmm. our country every mm -hmm. year and a lot of families are affected by these uh, storms and uh, different mm -hmm. uh, natural disasters. How do they become part of the program if they're not part of the database initially? Well, uh, mm -hmm. th those that are uh, typhoon victims, well, uh -huh. we do have Pantoid Pamilya beneficiaries who do who, who are like, for example, you land the victims. Okay. So let's say for that period of uh, the, the, when the storm hit, let's say uh, December, January, and February, uh -huh. what we did was we gave the cash grants, uh, uh, we, we call it non-compliance based. Okay. Whether you're 85% attendance or not, we gave the grant okay. as part of the assisting them uh, go through uh, the, the effects of Typhoon Yolanda. Mm -hmm. Sir, and there are several critics of the programs. Do you think that it should continue, whoever the next president will be? Yes, uh, we do believe that it should continue. Mm -hmm. uh, already we're starting to see uh, when, the, when our poverty statistics went down from about 26.9 mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, and, and went down to 23.9 in the first semester of mm -hmm. uh, 2013, mm -hmm. the NEDA was the one who said that uh, it is that Pantawid Pamilya was a high contributor to that effect. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Yolanda happened in December 2013, so our poverty figures went up again to about 24.9 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, our hunger statistics are also uh, becoming lower uh, mm -hmm. year on year. Mm -hmm. There's clearly a downward trend in uh, hunger incidence in the Philippines. And we're also sure that within the 4.4 million families, uh, hunger is decreasing because in the impact evaluation, uh, it was shown that uh, Pantoid families compared to non-Pantoid families mm -hmm. spend better for food and they spend uh, money on uh, nutritious food, let's mm -hmm. say eggs and vegetables, rather than some other uh, food that is high in sodium or uh, very low nutritional value. Mm -hmm. And sir, in the past elections, the DSWD has been actively campaigning the Bawal Ang Epal yes, campaign yes. because the LGU is an active part of uh, the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino program. There are some rumors that some officials will withdraw the, C the CCT okay. grants yeah. from the voters if they do not vote for the specific candidates. Can you, can you correct this notion? Yes, uh, we always tell our, the public and our Pantawid Pamilya beneficiaries mm -hmm. that it is only DSWD and their performance uh, that will ensure that they are in the program or if they will be taken out of the program. Mm -hmm. There is no other uh, person, official, or government agency that can uh, remove them from the program except for uh, DSWD. Mm -hmm. So that's why we also uh, warn them against uh, those people who uh, make either promises that uh, they can be included in Panto with Familia. Uh, we tell them don't, don't believe those uh, statements. It's only DSWD who can uh, remove or add them to the mm -hmm. program. In our uh, family development sessions, mm -hmm. we also have a module on active citizenship. Mm -hmm. And part of that is also actually uh, like electoral education. Mm -hmm. So we're, ho we're also uh, hopeful that in these next elections, our Pantuid Familia beneficiaries will be able to vote wisely. Mm -hmm. And on that note, thank you very much for joining us tonight here on News Live. That's Assistant Secretary Javier Jimenez, the spokesperson of the DSWD.